Welcome to King of the Nerds. We have selected 11 of the sharpest brains in Britain to occupy Nerdvana, a nerd haven, where they will compete against each other using brain power, <laughs> mastery of gameplay, <laughs> and their knowledge of all things geek culture. <laughs> all in the company of leading figures from the world of nerd, and under the watchful eye of their nerdy leader, Connie Huck. In the end, there can be only one! <laughs> can it smash? The winner will be crowned King of the Nerds and sit atop the magnificent Throne of Games! It's so pretty, it's so pretty. Previously on King of the Nerds. No! Tempers raged. Just let me talk. As the teams battled the elements. This wind is a nightmare. In the Castle of Thrones challenge. Get it! Splash! And Team Evil were defeated again and faced the dreaded nerd off. Victorious Mark wasn't shy in electing himself as team captain. I'm assuming captaincy of team evil. And roleplay nerd Hannah's hopes of being crowned king of the nerds were zapped forever. This is a special day. No dragons, no castles. What's going on? Today, you will engage in a nerd war that will settle age-old scores on the most pressing issues. Connie's wearing one of those funny little hats that you get when you graduate. This is going to be an academic challenge. I'm good at that. I've got three degrees. Bring it on. We nerds must be heard. The worst challenge for me would be something to do with public speaking. In a live... I literally feel sick. Yes! This is what I'm waiting for. A challenge that's based on intellect and not luck. Me and Yasmin both studied law, so we know how to debate. I can talk the hind legs off a banther. Team Defenders of Time boasts five nerds, but Team Evil is left with just three. Team Evil, you seem remarkably happy considering you're outnumbered. We have two law students on our team. So, Defenders of Time, what say you to that? We got more brains. We gotta win this. We're on a winning streak of two. Five not... brains may not necessarily be better than three. My spidey senses is tingling. They couldn't possibly send us into a nerd war three against five. Defenders of Time, your team consists of five members. So we have chosen three nerds from your team at random to participate. The first nerd is... I did one debate once in year eight, and I think I lost. Kenny. Why? Next up... Kerry. I'm a gamer. I sit in my room and I game by myself. I couldn't be any further out of my comfort zone. And finally, Matt. Defense of time can no longer be frivolous. It's time for the game face. We have got to win this. This is my objective as first day of captain of Team Evil. Win or die. Back to Nirvana. You have two hours to prepare your arguments. We really have to win this, Ned Wall. We can't continue with two people. If we win this, we have a chance, but otherwise, we're screwed. This is literally my worst nightmare. Oh, this, is God, yes. this is it. 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 In the great nerd debate, the nerds will argue the existence of Doctor Who, violence in Game of Thrones, and whether Harry Potter is just for kids. 
Oh, interesting. But for team defenders of time, the first debate is who exactly is in charge? We are against the idea of Doctor Who. Curse can do this. Game of Thrones. Coach, well, let's Coach. Karen, can you just let me forget this, please? This is a chance for Karen to kind of zip it a little bit and let me take the reins. What I'd recommend both of you guys do is sit down and sort of quietly think of some lists of things. Probably first, it's worth sitting down, having a chat. Can I finish, Karen, sure. please? Of course. I'm a bit of a control freak. I'll speak to these two about how to sort of debate, how to structure it, how to put the things together. I'd like to be present while you're t talking about the debate stuff. It's a big personality flaw. Are we going to split off into just groups? I think it's worked well for us. Because we haven't tasks. discussed this yet. Yes. I'm not quite sure what Karen's trying to do. Is she trying to take control? Before we start, I'd like to write down on the whiteboard what the order of the debate is. Oh. I'll go Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. I've read all the books many times. As captain, I'm making the decision to let the players pick their strongest topics. I take Game of Thrones. I've read the books twice. I've been to Game of Thrones pub quizzes and I've watched the series over and over again. This is mine. This is my time to shine. I'll have to do Doctor Who. Do. See, I know Doctor Who, but I don't know Doctor Who. I'm taking one for the team here. I'm going for Doctor Who. I do know a bit, but not a lot. Okay. Christ, I'm not, I'm not really big. I like Doctor Who, but not the new stuff. The new, I like the old stuff. I'm not really that into it. Not like Curtis will be. And I know he'll be training whoever's going up to do that one. Kerry, I think you can put together a really good argument. For what? For Doctor Who, because you have Kerry, who has lots of information. Okay. You can feed you that information. I, I, yeah, if there's something, I can literally bite the damn thing. I've literally never seen an episode of Doctor Who. It's actually like Doctor Who. If Kerry's in the corner with someone as supportive as Coach Curtis, who's already won two nerd as a coach, then, you know, she'll be really supported through this. Um, can I do Game of Thrones? With Game of Thrones, for me, it's all there, ready to be drawn on. So I'm happy doing Game of Thrones with you. That's no problem. I suppose I'm stuck with Karen today. Yippee. I've never read Harry Potter, but I'm happy doing it. Are you sure? Yeah. Three, two, one. Your Honour, I am here to put forward the motion... Self-appointed team captain Mark now adds CEO to his resume. From primary... Sounds self. Oh. Chief Elocution Officer. I took part in a fair few debates when I was at school, and I know how to hammer home an argument. Take a deep breath and launch it. Just slide right. into it. Okay. This is like the King's Speech one. Okay. Like a, that's to say I'm a bit of an expert. Three, two, one, and... Hi, everyone. I don't know how I'm going to introduce myself. That's the other thing, guys. Uh, do introduce yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, fellow nerds. I'm here to debate the notion that this, 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 and then begin. Right. I'm going to give you a primer on what Game of Thrones is. How much do you know about Game of Thrones? My debating skills aren't bad, actually. I watched it once or twice through TV. The whole show? Yeah. By default, Kenny is stuck with Karen. So all the way from the first episode to the end of the fourth season. Of course, I, I thought you might have only watched the first couple of seasons. No, I watched all of them, hence all of them. Kenny will hopefully hold his tongue. It is a great show. I like the show. It's not just silly violence. That's all the, oh, yeah, this is the not just... Yeah, that's true. We, yeah, behind all the... Really, yeah, that's the second part. Yeah, of course. Just let me finish. You're right. If you don't let me speak, I can't give an opinion. I just want to get this over and done with. I think this is Team Evil's comeback. This is... We need a comeback. We can't... Yeah, this is our chance. This challenge was made for us. Absolutely. We've lost two Nerd Wars. We need to win. Tip of the tongue, the teeth and the lips. The tip of the tongue, the teeth and the lips. Team Evil have to win today because I cannot handle another loss. No way. Now I want to sleep easy tonight and put them in the fire. Yeah. It's going to happen. I believe in you and I believe in you. All right? Well, it's nice that Mark's going to easy win whichever the other one's I just read Dalek. D-A-L-E-K. But spell it phonetically. Spell it how you... D-A-R-L-I-K. Yeah. As the team captain and a friend, I really hate to see Kerry like this. <laughs> Kerry is just terrified of public speaking, doesn't like debate, and has never seen Doctor Who. If I, if I was in her position, I would be really upset too. I could just write a script, but it's going to sound better if it's in your own words, yes. because no, you're, you're, you're more comfortable with it. I'm literally going to ruin it for the team. Oh, this is awful. I literally wouldn't have applied if I knew it would be like this. 
she is on the end of her tether, and the last thing we need is a broken Kelly. I think Kerry's having a breakdown. I don't know how she's going to hold up on stage. Oh, this is awful. I literally wouldn't have applied if I knew it would be like this. She is on the end of her tether, and the last thing we need is a broken Kelly. I think Kerry's having a breakdown. I don't know how she's going to hold up on stage. And now it's time for the first ever Great Nerd Debate. Three nerds from each team have one minute to argue for or against the motions. No debate is complete without judges. Please welcome actress, writer and comedienne, Catherine Ryan. <laughs> Catherine Ryan, she's really funny. I've seen her stuff. I love her. Next up, he starred in Harry Potter, Doctor Who, Game of Thrones, the list goes on. It's David Bradley! <laughs> oh my goodness, it's David Bradley. David Bradley is amazing. Is that guy the caretaker in Harry Potter? David, can I ask you firstly, what are you looking for in our teams today? Passion for the subject and a clear and concise argument. I'm so screwed. Catherine, what will you be looking for? I'm looking for personality and really someone who can win but also entertain me. I'm looking over at Defender Satine and I notice it's Carrie wearing the Doctor Who scarf. She's shaking like a leaf. First, I call upon Kerry and Mark. I've got to debate in front of a well-established stand-up comedian and a Royal Shakespeare Company actor. This isn't going to be easy. First motion. The Doctor in Doctor Who is the sole catalyst for all the events in the series. Without the Doctor, there is no Doctor Who. Mark, you are arguing for... Your time starts... Now. Thank you, distinguished guests, fellow nerds, Connie. If the Doctor didn't exist, then we wouldn't need the Doctor in the first place. His use of time travel and consistent interference with the lives of normal people make him a hugely influential figure within the events that occur around him. The Doc travels in his TARDIS, undoubtedly causes ripples in the space-time continuum. Mark's not doing as well as I thought. He's definitely left himself open for attack. The Rose Tylers, the Donna Nobles, the Amy Ponds, all lead normal lives until the Doctor shows up and he turns their lives upside down, showing that, in fact, he is a catalyst for the events that we see in the show. Thank you. Your time is up. I'm Gallifrey, that's over. Kerry, you will be arguing against. My heart is racing. Everything around me has gone black. I would rather pay the £15,000 for someone to do this for me. Kerry is white as a ghost. I have never seen her this scared. The very thought that the Doctor is a catalyst is just laughable. The majority of episodes feature plans already in motion when the Doctor arrives. Where did this come from? For example, in The Christmas Invasion, the Doctor is unconscious from the beginning of the episode. And by the time he awakens, there is a spaceship looming over London. Does that sound like a catalyst to you? Kelly is doing so well. Did the existence of the do Doctor directly lead to the creation of the Daleks? No. Daleks are dangerous by their nature. If the Doctor didn't exist, somebody would need to stop them in his place. Your time is up. I am so glad that is over. Kelly was absolutely amazing. Up there, projecting confidence, reading out the stuff about Doctor as if she knew all about it. I was so proud. Judges, what did you think? Mark, I love your enthusiasm and obvious passion for the subject.
Kerry, did you get all this knowledge yourself or did you have any help? I've actually never watched Doctor Who. My team, especially Curtis, is a very, very big fan, so I have thanks to him for that. Catherine, Kerry, you were nervous at first, but you really found your confidence in the end. I have no problem with coaching. That's what you do, you use your resources. Mark, your cosplay is a bit monkey at the circus for me. <laughs> but I really thought that you delivered your argument with a lot of passion. You seemed to genuinely be motivated by what you were saying, and it came from the heart. Mark and Kerry rejoin their teams for the judges' votes. Although Kerry's given some good arguments, I think I've got this. Okay. Catherine. My point goes to Mark. Cheers, Catherine. David. My point for this one goes to Kerry. I did not expect that. Well, whatever. Not asking for his autograph now. I'm glad that I did it. I proved to myself and my team that I could overcome my biggest fear. Next up are Yasmin and Kenny. They are debating the second motion. Game of Thrones is just an excuse for gratuitous fantasy violence and has no relevance to real-world events. In Game of Thrones, everyone's fighting over the power within their little forts, but they're completely missing out the White Walkers, and obviously winter is coming, and it's been coming for four seasons so far and five books. Violence. <laughs> So much violence, forced marriage, rape, beatings, mass murders at weddings, having your skull crushed through your eyes, unnecessary. The passion of Yasmin's argument impresses David. You made a very strong case. My point goes to you. Putting Team Evil up by one point. Yes, a point from Walder Frey. But Kenny's unique style wins Catherine over. My point goes to Kenny. It was... I think the hat did the trick. And after two debates, both teams are neck and neck on two points apiece. We still have one debate remaining. Emily versus Matt. This is it. Nerd crunch time. Beauty versus the beast. Sorry, Matt. The final motion is... The Harry Potter books and films are modern classics and are not just for kids. I know Harry Potter, I have a great speech prepared, I'm just gonna go for it. Seeing Emily in the Harry Potter cape made me think two things. One, she pulls it off much better than me. Two, I could definitely lose this. Emily, you will be arguing for, and your time starts now. Your Honours, I would like to put forward the motion that the Harry Potter books and films are parables. Voldemort's campaign to wipe out those with tainted blood is arguably representative of the racial cleansing attempted by Adolf Hitler during World War II. Emily is all about poison and charisma, the two things that I do not have. In conclusion, Harry Potter is an epic struggle of one group of people against another that every single person on this planet can relate to. That's it. Your time is up. I think I did that really well. Matt, you'll be arguing against. Being last is horrendous. It basically means the result of the competition is left to me. Your time starts now. Harry Potter is beloved precisely because it is a simple children's book. When you cast the cold light of a Lumio spell upon it, the cracks begin to show. Hogwarts is hogwash. You sound like a grumpy old man talking about this thing these kids like nowadays. It's a very inconsistent world with a lot of mishmash of Latin spells just garbled together to create a world of magic. In conclusion, it's basically a boggart. It may superficially seem to be quite threatening and powerful and important. Ultimately, it's just a mild diversion. Time's up. David? Both of you argued well. Voldemort, sorry, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the comparison. <laughs> you were passionate. Well, sometimes it was a little bit hurried for me personally to catch. Emily, I agree that the stories are parables, and I thought the way that you argued the case was uh, very impressive. Catherine. 
Emily, you are impeccably poised. Your argument was beautifully written. Matt, I want to smile when I look at you. You look like your back hurts. <laughs> I warmed to you immediately. With the scores equal at two points per team, everything rests on the final judges' votes. This is going to be tight. David. This was the best performance of the whole nerd war. So my point goes to... David. This was the best performance of the whole nerd war. Emily, my point goes to you. Wow, what praise. Catherine. They say there are two types of personality, one that just has natural talent and one that works really hard every day. And then sometimes you get both those things. Emily, my point goes to you. You've got both of <laughs> <laughs> I'm super happy. Hashtag winning! The judges definitely made the right decision. Yeah, team up! In victory, team captain Mark seems his usual humble self. Boom! My first week as captain, and we won the nerd war. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> I knew a change of command was good. For losers, team defenders of time, there's no debating the fact that two of them will go head to head in the dreaded nerd off. And one of them will go home. I'm not too scared about losing a nerd war. In the nerd off, that's when things are really serious. But having talked their way to victory, Team Evil have earned themselves a silent disco. This is probably going to be the smallest disco I've ever been to, but I'm going to dance my ass off. Yeah, that's what that needed right there. It's party time. Yo, fool, I think victory tastes good. <laughs> All right, let's get some tunes on. Yes. This is really neat. Woo! My mum taught me a few things here and there, but then mostly watching a bit of Strictly and you pick things up. <laughs> it's not as hard as it looks. We've got a whole day off tomorrow, we can just watch yep. the Defenders of Time squirm. <laughs> Defenders of Time must now vote one of their own members into the nerd off. No one likes this bit. Well, I obviously don't think you vote for me because... You're I mean, an I, amazing tutor. I was an amazing tutor, and I think I've been strong on other tasks, particularly the building one. I think I should say mainly because we haven't actually done a challenge where I can prove myself yet, but I kind of feel like today showed that I'd just give it a go. If I had to blame anyone, if it's got to be Matt, he was very keen to take charge of this task, and it didn't really work out in the end. I wasn't the best at this challenge, but I still put up a good fight. I mean, would it just be rubbing it in to say how I'd have done it differently? In well, the that's era? irrelevant. But... Yeah, fair enough, I, I won't go into it then. Karen has been taking leadership in all of our tasks so far, and I think everyone is getting fed up of it. Obviously, today I didn't get to go into the debate, but I did my best to help anyone who needed it. So, please don't vote for me. Just because Karen didn't take part in the debate doesn't mean that she is safe from elimination. Who do you think the other team's going to nominate? Frankly, I can make arguments for it being any one of us. Yeah! Right, who's going in to the snake pit? The groovy winners, Team Evil, get to cast the second vote. Matt and Karen are the two strongest at the moment. Matt is an obvious one, but he knows his stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Matt will take out who's going in. So what do we do? I would say vote for the team captain, yeah. take Great. out Matt. We need to take him out. He is heading up the team, he's very intelligent, and this is going to be our only chance to take him down. Right, Matt it is. Cool. Come on, the gang. Business taken care of, it's time to party. I guess three nerds does not a disco make. Do you want to get him up here? I'll get him. Yeah, That's yeah, more yeah. like it. <laughs> The jive, yeah. a leg kick, air guitar, sidestep. I am the dance master. Wiggly arms, kicking. That's the conga. Everybody conga. Oh, you look like Captain Caveman. Is it? Super? You look amazing. 
Princess Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. While their teammates get stuck into wigs, Matt and Mark don their team captain hats for a serious nerd strategy meeting. What's the crowd? What's the what's the feeling from you guys? Like, you, know, you guys are obviously in the on the yeah, yeah. task of the nerd off tomorrow, like you know. So. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to pick someone who's going to help you, and there's nothing we're going to do to change that. And if you want to pick me, that's fine. But I don't think that's the best long-term game. All I can say is I think the girls are going to go for you. Okay. I'm in danger of leaving the competition entirely. Yeah. I pleaded your case. I said that you're probably strong, you're probably winning anyway, so what's the point putting you in? He's one of the strongest players in the competition. My game plan going forward is to keep him on side, even if he is a threat. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. OK. All right. Cool. Cheers. Well, back to the party. That's what you do. Come on. Warning. PhD grade plotting coming up. Some viewers may experience brain ache. I know that Team Evil have sent me in, so it's really about choosing my opponent. Kerry and Kenny are going to want to go for Karen just for the personal side of things. But Karen could definitely beat me. Curtis would be a safer bet. I've been having a few words with Mark to see what he's thinking. You've got to be quite a sneaky and underhanded to get far in this game. Okay. And it sounds like it's a toss-up between me and you. What? I mean, not everything I say in this game is going to be strictly true. So do you think it would be smart for the three of us to vote for Curtis? No. What? What if we want someone you could potentially beat? I don't think I can beat. He's got a lot of weaknesses, though. He's seen no films. Is Matt trying to protect himself so that we nominate Curtis because he's more confident? against Curtis than he is with Karen. So I think if we could just agree to vote one way. I'm going to pick who I'm picking. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Awkward. So I don't think there's any way to get the desired Curtis vote that I was thinking of. As a result, I've just got to pack up my tears and put in my big boy pants and prepare to face the nerd off. In the throne room, it's judgment day for the nerds. Welcome once again to the throne room. The losing team is about to discover which two of its members have been chosen to go into the nerd off and fight to keep their place in Nerdvana. Matt, nice bandana. Bandana. War mode. Engaged. You have been summoned here for the merciless task of seeing who has been chosen for this week's nerd off. This room is just so tense. And who is one step closer to being crowned the winner and earning their rightful place atop the magnificent Throne of Games? Throne of Games? That's like the ultimate nerd glory. However, the loser will be expelled forever! Victorious Team Evil, you have won the right to vote one of Team Defenders of Time into the Nerd Off. Matt is looking really nervous. I have your votes tallied here. I can tell you all it was a majority vote. And the first nerd entering this week's Nerd Off is... Matt. Nice! <laughs> the game's afoot. Matt. You seem happy that the opposing team has voted for you. I'm not happy to be going in, but it means that I was predicting what they were going to do. Losing team, defenders of time, you have to send the second nerd into the nerd off from your own team. I have your votes tallied here. The second nerd facing this week's nerd off is... Karen. Karen? Thanks, guys. Really harsh. Why do you think your team nominated you? I don't know. I'm quite upset at my team for putting me in, actually. Why Karen? I'm as confused as Karen is. I didn't vote for her. I don't really know why people did. It's a bit early to start knocking out strong members of our team. We've still got quite a few team challenges to go. Two of the strongest members on the opposing team are in the nerd off. I am very pleased. Kenny. She is my strongest threat. She does everything I do, and plus, I find her pretty annoying. Kerry. I feel like her strengths have been used in the previous challenges. Karen, Matt, please step forward and kneel before the throne. In the nerd off, 
Each player faces a 90 second quick fire quiz round on a topic chosen for them by their opponent. So they must choose wisely. If there's bad categories on the board, then I think I'm going home. This week's subjects are 80 sci fi, space science, space vehicles, and Turner Prize winners. The Turner Prize winner is clearly the most dangerous one. Nobody here knows that much about art. Karen, which subject will you choose for Matt? I think I'm going to go for space science. Matt, which subject will you choose for Karen? I mean, she's left the poison chalice right on the board. Turner Prize winners. You may stand. Matt and Karen must now pick their study partners. Karen. I'd like to go for Mark, if he's willing. I've picked Mark to help me because, obviously, he knows about quizzes. Well, since you did ask me first, and uh, I will help you here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry. Karen picks first, and, of course, he snatches away my space oddity, Mark. Really frustrated. Matt, who do you put your trust in? Certainly be happy to have Curtis on my side. I can do that. I accept. I don't have Mark's knowledge, but I have Coach Curtis, and his winning streak can hopefully extend to a three for three. Retreat, nerds, and return finely attuned to the subject matter betrothed to you. I totally screwed up. How? I, I know nothing about the Turner Prize. Just in the heat of the moment, I gave him one I thought he'd be bad at, not one I thought I'd be bad at. I'm such an idiot. <sighs> no. Space science was something I would have done extremely well at. If I even know the closest star to our solar system that isn't the sun, it's Proxima Centauri. You're yeah. Sure? No? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Meanwhile, Yasmin has a burning question for Team Evil. Connie said that the vote wasn't unanimous. Who didn't vote for Matt? Warning, super nerdy subterfuge coming up. Some viewers may find their heads explode. You didn't vote for Matt? Um, scary biscuits. I want Matt out, mm. but I have to save face. I have to keep him thinking we're both kind of buddies about this. Think about it, it's being diplomatic. It's like twisting the knife and smiling at the same time. So I kind of figured, like, Matt's going in anyway. It's literally, it's a, it's a gentleman's agreement. What gentleman's agreement, man? This is a competition. No, anyway, I've got to go. Cool. I'll catch you later. See you right. later. Good luck. Bye. It is true what they say about keeping your friends close and your enemies closer. It's for my benefit to keep them on side with me and see how it goes. It just feels a bit snaky that he didn't tell us. For the break, Team Evil discovered that Mark has been working as a double agent. You didn't vote for Mark. Um, it's literally, it's a, it's a gentleman's agreement. What gentleman's agreement, man? This is a competition. And when the nerds get together, they uncover yet more dastardly deeds. Matt suggested that me, him and Kenny form an alliance and all vote for Curtis. <gasps> I think what he said was, if Team Evil votes for Kerry, mm. then you'd have a bigger chance of winning against, winning against Curtis, Curtis instead of Karen. So oh. Kerry's name didn't actually come up. Kerry was never even in the picture. It was always Matt who we were going for. No. So he just didn't want to go totally. up against Karen, basically, yeah. and made it seem like it was all him trying to protect me, yeah. when really he was just trying to protect himself. That's very sneaky. Curtis has no idea that this happened. Has nobody told him? Curtis doesn't actually know the conversation we have with Matt. Maybe we should let him know. In the war room, Matt and Karen have two hours to cram as many facts as possible into their boffin-like brains. You must have hate this time. I wish, because this isn't my subject. The mood in the war room is as glum as before the Battle of Helm's Deep. Look at these famous ones here. Yeah. You know, Gormley Hurst, McQueen. It's not sticking. You seem remarkably calm, Matt. The thing is, I'm so stressed all the time that this uh. doesn't really phase me anymore. Coach Curtis is kind of my good luck troll. Curtis, may I rub your head? If you must. Zim, zoom, zam. OK, now I'm going to win. Matt, just can I make a request when we're in there? I've gone up to Matt and asked him to try and not sort of flail around so much if he knows an answer that I don't. You probably won't, but I know when you're in the crowd, you're like, no, I know him!
please don't do that if it's during my um, thing. Um, I cannot be contained. I'll react. No, I'll, I'll react how I react. How I react. Oh, Please don't do it. Seriously. It's a natural reaction. It's not doing, I'm not doing anything on purpose. It's just, well, just cross your arms or something. He's kind of said he can't. Felt pretty rude and dismissive. Seriously. I don't really twitch. I just exude rhythmic passion uh, whenever I get nervous, which is 24-7. And certainly, if I can twitch her out of the competition, I will twitch away. Time has run out for Karen and Matt. Will their intense revision be enough to pass the ultimate nerd test? I've seen the nerdos and I've seen what they can do to people. You can cut the atmosphere with a lightsaber. Matt looks really, really scared. This is intense. <sighs> Matt and Karen. That's like Thor battling out with Iron Man. Smile! Welcome to the Nerd Off. You two nerds before me will now engage in fierce battle. It's Matt versus Karen. Karen, how do you feel? Karen looks pretty cool and collected. I was in a very bad mood this morning. I felt I had picked the wrong subject. Having done the revision, I think actually it's everything still to play for. Matt. Your given subject is space science. I shall grab my spear and hopefully become the dinosaur slayer. Your 90 seconds starts now. In 1961, who became the first American in space? John Glenn. Alan Shepard. John Glenn was the first man in orbit. On which planet is the tallest known volcano in the solar system? Mars. Correct. Which was the only member of the Apollo 11 crew not to walk on the moon? Michael Collins. Correct. Which comet will next be observable from Earth in July 2061? Collins. Correct. The words Houston, we've had a problem, was spoken on which 1970 NASA mission? What have I seen? Correct. The USSR launched which space station in 1986? Yeah. Correct. Venus. Correct. Valentina Tereshkova. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. Matt is on fire. Which planet does Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, Jupiter. orbit? Correct. In which year did Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon? 1969. Correct. Hmm, the force is strong with this one. What was the project name of the NASA spacecraft that put first Americans into space? Uh, Mercury. Correct. What is the name of the rover that landed on Mars in August 2012? Curiosity. Correct. Could you get any more right? Which major constellation is named after a Greek mythological hunter? Orion. Correct. How is the galaxy in which the Earth resides commonly known? Milky Way. Correct. I thought Connie was going to run out of questions. Matt, that was pretty impressive stuff. You scored 16 points. <sighs> Who gets 16 points in 90 seconds? He did freakishly well. How is that even possible? Karen, your subject is the Turner Prize. You need 17 correct answers. Karen does not look happy. You have 90 seconds on the clock. Your time starts. Now, who created one of the Turner Prize's most notorious shortlisted works, My Bed? Tracy Emin. Correct. In 86, who became the first artist to win the prize with pieces that were not paintings? Gilbert and George. Correct. What was the name of the work for which Damien Hirst was awarded the 95 prize? Mother and Child Divided. Correct. Keep the pace up. You could actually climb this mountain. Come on. Rachel White Reed won in 93 for a concrete cast of the inside of what structure? A house. Correct. Which year's Turner Prize featured the first all-woman shortlist? 1997. Correct. In which city was the 2007 Turner Prize exhibition held? Liverpool. Correct. How much does the winner of the Turner Prize receive? £25,000. Correct. Who caused the stir by swearing while presenting the 2001 Madonna. Turner Prize? Correct. Who won the 98 Turner Prize for a painting which incorporated elephant dung? We've been over this one. You know this. Pass. Chris Offaly. Which art critic said of the 2005 Turner Prize, ignoring it is the kindest thing one can do? Pass. Brian Saul. 1997. 94. Don't know. This isn't looking good. Pass. I lost dates, I lost names. I lost names that we've been over in great detail. Which Oscar-winning director of 12 Years a Slave won the 1999 prize? <laughs> the answer was Steve, Steve McQueen. McQueen. Karen, you managed to score a total of nine points meaning that you haven't done enough, unfortunately, to stay in the competition. Well, nine is a really good score on a quick five round. Against most other people, that would probably be a win. Matt was just too fast. Matt put on a spectacular performance. 
barely understood some of his answers, but I do know they were right. Unfortunately, you must leave Nerdvana immediately. So there was a huge chance to egg on my face in this one, so the fact I came out victorious is incredibly satisfying. Matt, congratulations. Fast work. You will be the talk of the town from here to Nerd of <laughs> A big round of applause to Matt. And Curtis. Three people I've coached to victory, none I've coached to defeat. It's almost as if I'm brilliant or something. You have gloriously triumphed in this week's Nerd Off and will live to fight another nerd war. Now go wash that mandana. Nerds, back to Nerdvana. I was hoping to stay as long as I could. I wanted to have some more fun on the tasks. I'm disappointed in myself for making a stupid mistake in the throne room, picking the wrong subject. I'm leaving the dinosaur behind for Astraptor's gonna, gonna hang around in Nerdvana. An endearing nerd hoping for a historic feat, but all she got was a prehistoric foot. <laughs> Hashtag obliterated. This uh, raised one for Karen. She put up a very valiant effort, and I was a pleasure to coach her in the last nerd off. Karen. 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 I think I've lost a bit of an ally in Karen. She was always a good friend of mine, and we loved discussing nerdy things. But at the end of the day, the nerd off is a cruel mistress. It sends people home. Bye bye, Karen. If we're going to work together as a team, I feel that Curtis needs to know everything that's going on. Last night, um, Matt had spoken to Mark and said that me and Matt were up to going the nerd off. His strategy would be for us to vote for you because he thinks I'm, you're the only person I could beat in the nerd off. And then we later found out that Mark didn't mention my name. Right. So we think he was trying to uh, <laughs> have his own strategy there and go against you. That's very interesting. I'm a bit in shock, to be honest. I did not see Matt sneaking about behind my back. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not willing to play that sort of game. Nope. I've always said day one, not doing that. Matt is a major threat, and we now know we can't trust him. But I think we need to be honest with each other if he does try it again, because don't forget, he doesn't know that you know. Hmm. Are you going to let him know that you know? Um, I don't want to break the team down. It could all blow up, so I think I'm going to keep Stum. I'm not going to trust him again, but I'm not going to make an issue of it. Yet. Next time. Oh, nerds! I'm trapped! She's actually trapped in the TV. The nerds take a plunge into cyberspace. Set phases to full power. And prepare to battle it out. Vaporize! God, he's so annoying. We are totally going to destroy Team Evil. Yet again. Joystick jockey Charlie Brooker drops by. You victorious <laughs> scum. But for someone, it's game <sighs> over. As one more nerd bids farewell to Nerdvana. You're just scared of it. You won't I'm do not, it. You won't do don't, it. Don't cut me off while I'm talking, please. And from mental strategy to physical prowess, if that's got you feeling competitive, next weekend you'll be in your element with the start of the Premier League over on Sky Sports. And stay with us as the fight for survival continues. A nuclear sub hoves into view and the rest will be a spoiler. So sit tight, the last ship sails in next on Sky One.